Hi, my name is Joseph Vaughn. I'm a second year master's student at the Johns Hopkins uh, School of Advanced International Studies, or SICE for short. Um, before grad school, I worked at uh, an investment fund focused on emerging markets, and specifically our interest was in China and companies that are operating in China and East Asia. And now kind of my interest in terms of research here at SICE is on the intersection between economics and national security uh, and economic statecraft. The idea for this piece came about uh, with my co-author, uh, Justin Fong, who's also at SICE. Uh, both Justin and I think that semiconductors are uh, an area that's going to only see kind of more attention, especially from folks in government uh, who are thinking about the intersection between kind of economic and uh, commercial incentives at the, the firm level, but then also the national security risk that potentially arises when uh, you have an economy like China's that uh, that has a lot of state investment, state-directed investment in areas of critical technology. And I think there's a, uh, a feeling among many in Washington that China's a investment drive um, to spend billions of dollars in, in developing its semiconductor industry is pushing into areas of technology, sort of forced technology transfer, whether that's through foreign direct investment into U.S. companies or into coercing uh, U.S. partner countries into building factories and kind of plants and equipment in China itself. So in China, there's a um, feeling that you need to invest to kind of pour as much money as possible into this problem because uh, the U.S. has been sort of systematically closing off access to whether it's um, high-tech semiconductor chips themselves or potentially the software that's needed to design those chips. And then most recently in October, we saw a very dramatic escalation in terms of the semiconductor controls on manufacturing equipment that's used to create the semiconductors. And that equipment kind of concentrated within a handful of countries. But then now what we're seeing is a push, a uh, more multilateral push from the administration to get both the Japanese and the Dutch on board with the unilateral action that they took in October. Um, and there are other initiatives from a multilateral angle as well, including what's called CHIP4, um, which includes the U.S., Japan, Korea, and then also uh, Taiwan that have a massive amount of investment and in, I guess a massive amount of control over certain parts of the semiconductor supply chain. I think one of the issues with a voluntary organization like COCOM or like um, a fifth multilateral export control regime would look like, whether that's CHIP4 or whether it's more broad, I think the issue is just that there are competing interests in terms of the commercial incentives to continue selling to a market that's the size of China's, and then the national security risk of some of this technology coming into military applications that potentially pose a risk in, in the uh, Indo-Pacific. And so I think um, when it comes to deciding the, the breadth of the organization itself, that is a big question that needs to be resolved. Um, and so there's a, an incentive for U.S. policymakers to make sure that export controls are as multilateral as possible. Um, but the problem with having them be as multilateral as possible is that if you have, as in the case of Wassenaar, Russia member of the organization, then that will constrain um, kind of your ability to control certain items. And even if it's not Russia, even if it's Japan or some of the allied countries that, that have an expertise in semiconductors, their commercial incentives vis-a-vis -vis China maybe outweigh some of the national security concerns that the U.S. would have. And so the, the more you push in the direction of breadth in terms of the size of the organization, you might not be able to, to convince that larger number of members of an organization like COCOM or the, uh, the new COCOM to sign on to quite as tough control. So it's a matter of balancing those two, two problems.